Welcome to Caseback Watches. My name is Tim and in this episode I'd like to speak or I'd like to discuss the topic what has to be done in the current crisis. The plan was presenting you here a comparison between two famous or let's say wanted wristwatches. But you know what? I'm not in the mood and I think half of the population of the globe is not in the mood because we're again in a severe lockdown. Infection rates go high, the death toll goes up and people are suffering financially or yeah, with their, with their lives basically. And you see this also on YouTube. If you follow some watch channels, even watch channels are badly affected by that. I'm thinking of, for example, Bluefish watch reviews. I'm a, I'm a subscriber of guys work there and he's selling his Speedmaster Professional now due to the crisis because he's in trouble, financial trouble, needs money, tries to sell his Speedmaster Professional. Really bad thing, really bad situation for him. And I'm not blowing a secret here by the way, he made two videos about that. And so I thought it's kind of disrespectful to just to carry on and to, to present you the next expensive wristwatch here. And so let's make something a little bit different. I mean, I'm thinking about my own situation, which is still in order. But we're debating in the family what has to be done to, to, yeah, to save wealth, to save money, to, let's say, minimize the negative effects of that crisis right now. And so I want to share some thoughts, some ideas with you. And yeah, maybe you can, you can contribute your own ideas in the comments. And then we have something useful here. And I want to illustrate the entire topic with three segments here. And this is watches, gold as an investment and real estate. Sounds boring, I know, but I think it, it's really worth it. And I think now it's the time to think a little bit about those things. And the part about watches and gold will be interesting, I promise you. And so let's begin. In March 2019, Paul Thorpe made a video together with David Khalil. So we have two watch dealers in London. March 2019. And Khalil said, um, in his own words, sales drop. Let's put it clear and simple. And he said, everybody who states that during such a crisis, the watch market is unaffected is a liar. I wouldn't put it that, that drastically, but I think there's some truth in it. He told there the story of an owner of a Rolex wanted sports model and the guy checked the boutiques, but nobody wanted to buy his watch. So all the people who were in trouble back then were in really deep trouble when they uh, rely on their watches to make some money, to, to grab some cash to, to su survive this crisis because nobody wanted to buy their watches. Now we are in a different situation, second lockdown 2020 and I personally heard from some dealers that they are willing to buy now, that they are willing to buy because I think they want to be the winner of this crisis because the crisis will end but now people are under pressure. And many people want to get rid of watches and so those dealers say then sell it to me, sell it all to me. And my advice here is just don't do it, just don't do it. If you see a market in a crisis and you see some guys with cash who can be winner of that crisis and you are in trouble with your watch then don't sell it. You are in an extremely bad position. Even if you have a YouTube channel like Guy, I mean he made two videos about his Omega Speedmaster. I don't know if the watch is sold now, but I mean this is a really really bad situation. You will not get the entire value of that timepiece and so just don't do it. Try to figure out other solutions. And when life is really grim and you have to sell your watch like Guy, then don't sell it to a dealer. Really not. Especially if you have a wanted piece with box and papers, maybe still under warranty, then sell it as a private person on Chrono24, for example. You will just get more money for it because you don't have to finance the spread of the dealer, the dealer's margin. And so, again, don't sell your watch in a crisis. And if you think now, wow, this could be a great opportunity to get in the market as a buyer. I have some cash, now I can grab all those, all those timepieces. This might work, but you can never know what, what's next year, what brands are in favor next year. I mean, if you have to buy now a watch, if you want it really bad, then my little advice is maybe you want to stick to a substantial value. I mean, if you have a world time in 18K gold, a big chunk of gold with fine movements in it, fine watchmaking in it, then this watch will be a chunk of gold with fine watchmaking after the crisis too, okay? One of my family members collects gold and he teached me some lessons here and basically three aspects to keep in mind. First, many bankers tell you that um, gold is a good asset because it's um, reliable and it's relatively stable. You cannot lose much money with it. The opposite is true. If you check the gold chart, the gold price on let's say goldprice.org, then you see 
up and down, up and down, up and down. So you can lose a substantial amount of money with gold. But the good part here is gold cannot drop to zero because it's yeah it's backed up by the by the actual material. And if you compare it with stocks, for example, or options, stock options, the value or the the, the price for stock option can drop to zero overnight. And yeah, you, you see this every night basically. So this is a little bit better when you buy gold. You cannot lose everything, but you can suffer losses like 10% or 20%, easy. Second, taxes. You have to check the regularities in your country before buying gold. This is important because in some um, countries you have VAT on gold or on other precious metal. And this is different in every region of the world. For example, in Germany, you can buy gold without paying VAT, without paying 19% taxes, but only gold in a, let's say, investment form. So we're talking about bars and coins and only the coins you can use as a currency. Very important to keep that in mind. If you have a vintage or antique gold coin and the coin is not longer accepted as currency, then it's taxed with 19%. So if you buy that coin, if you invest in those coins, you, you lose 19% in the first second. Same thing with silver in Germany. If you buy silver, you pay 19% taxes. And this is a really, really bad investment then. Third, gold price. There is not a single gold price. If you go on goldprice.org and you see the gold price for that day, it's not the entire truth. Because first, gold is an alloy sometimes. If you go with your golden necklace to a shop which buys gold, then the gold price you find online is for 24 carat, is for 1000 parts gold. But your necklace probably has only 750 parts of gold and so the price is reduced. This gold price, the official gold price, not your price. This is the problem then. And also you find two prices in those shops. There's one price for selling gold and one price for buying gold. And the spread, the, the difference is then the margin of the dealer. So you have to keep all those things in mind if you make your calculation. By the way, if you're interested, um, I was convinced by this family member, it might be a, at least interesting idea to buy one or two of the famous big gold coins, which are still currency. I'm talking here about the Krugerrand and Maple Leaf. And so if you want, then I could buy one of those coins and then we can examine them. I mean, they're pretty beautiful and pretty interesting, the history around them. So we could make a little gold coin review which is odd but those times here are odd and maybe maybe it's maybe it's fun who knows okay and now let's speak briefly about real estate in the last years we have seen this trend that real estate real estate prices go up they know only one direction and this trend is fired up by this crisis by the corona crisis strange at first glance because there's so much uh, so much money lost but there are still vast amounts of money in the market and you don't have enough houses in western cities and so this crisis will will enlarge the distance between you and your dream home, at least for many people. And my thought was, um, it's not a good thing when you wake up in 20 years and you realize then for you it's not longer possible to live in a big city. This would be a very unpleasant finding there. And so I thought, why not investing in the people who are the winners of this, of this boom, of this real estate boom. And so I'm talking about equity funds. And the idea, of course, is simple. If you cannot buy that house to be, a, to, be, to be a winner of the trend, to be participate here, then maybe another guy can do it. So basically a company which invests in real estate with your money. But of course, then you are a part of the stock market. And when we see a bubble, real estate bubble, and the bubble burst, which some people state will happen, then you are in a, in a bad situation. But at the long run, it's not a very likely scenario that we see lower real estate prices in the future. And so th this might be worth thinking, investing in equity funds to be part of the real estate price development. Okay, th those were my major three parts, but now in a little addition here, what needs to be done too. Um, I think really it's time to, uh, to improve your personal or your professional capabilities. I mean, a lot of people are working uh, from home now, which is a good thing, which is very efficient often, and which brings you perhaps more time, more time to do something else to improve your own life, to improve your capabilities, maybe even during work. I mean, why not? It was always my opinion when you're good in your, at your job, you're quick, you're efficient, and at the end of the day, you realize you have an hour left, that you do something for yourself. And I'm not talking about computer games. But why not watch a tutorial or learn a new software 
or pick up some new vocabulary, foreign languages or something like that. And maybe now it's the time to do exactly that. And I think it's also the time to assess your environment, your market, your society, what brings this crisis. And it might sound strange, but every crisis from time to time offers something. Let me give you a really drastic example. Imagine a guy in a wheelchair and he was used to hear over years that he's not um, hireable, is this the English word, I don't know, that companies don't want to hire him because he's disabled and maybe the office building has uh, or a shitty elevator or something like that. Now the guy is extremely competitive because the work world has changed and he's extremely competitive now, especially if he has used his spare time to learn something valuable. Or take musicians. A lot of those musicians realize now that it's very effective to give classes online via Skype or something like that. It's way more effective than giving classes when somebody shows up and you, you have to teach him in your house and then he, he doesn't show up because of the traffic or he, he's not in the mood. But he will be in the mood when he's sitting on his sofa and all, all he has to do is staring at the camera. I've given a lot of classes um, 10 years ago, so I know what I'm, I'm talking about. And so the advice here is just assess your environment. Maybe something has changed. Maybe you are in a good or better position than you think right now. Okay, that's all for this video. I will not continue with videos about the crisis here on Caseback Watches. It's not the plan, but I just felt the need to address this right now. And now stay healthy, guys, and until next time.